Kirkland ball, yes or no? Spinny. No. What? Arizona in July? No. Okay. Absolutely yes. Oh, wow, okay. Refurbished golf balls? No. no. Welcome back everybody to No Putts Given. This it was a special edition all the way from Scottsdale. Say this whiz? <laughs> Jeez whiz. Jesus. This is a special edition all the way from Scottsdale, Arizona. We're here for the 2023 official golf ball test. We do it every two years and man, oh man. The rate it... we're going will be here for the 2025 <laughs> ball test. So we won't oh, even that have is, to leave that anywhere. is true. It's it's been a wild what, three days, four days, three days? Doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <It's a> little, <laughs> we've been, yeah. We've been here. We're we're doing the damn Snakes, thing. Snakes, bobcats, like whatever. All the things. Just, yeah. We've got the whole team here. It's uh, not safe here. Two well, it's I really know. not. Two years ago we what had four people with us and a one engineer? And now we're stacked with eight, and we've got about four engineers working this. That sounds accurate. Well, what? So 2021 was 37 golf balls. How many How many were you testing this year? 45 plus 40. a control ball. 45 plus control. I don't okay. know where 46 came from, but it's 45. I don't know okay. where. Did I make that up? Maybe. It's hmm. close. That is close enough. Some yeah. number between 45 and 50. <laughs> it's the biggest in the industry. We're really proud of the work that we do here. Um, but I'm kind of curious. Everyone's been asking, what are the parameters a little bit in layman's terms, Tony? What What are we doing here? Yeah, I don't I don't even remember uh, the, the actual launch condition. So we're, we're using a Pro V1 as a calibration ball. Right. Uh, we had hoped to be able to use the USGA ball, but that did not pan out. So we're using a Pro V1 ball as the calibration ball. Okay. It's tour launch conditions with an eight iron minus just a little bit of spin. Okay. Uh, the, the 100 mile an hour swing speed. So that was 115 mile an hour equivalent swing speed. I think it's like 87 miles it's an like hour. Like 87, 88. Off the top yeah, of my for head. an eight iron. Um, okay. For the mid swing speed equivalent, it's... Roughly LPGA launch conditions with an eight iron is the calibration parameter. Okay. And then we just kind of follow that curve at 85 and say, you know, it's it's rough at a rough approximation of what an average player who swings 85 miles an hour. And, and likewise, close, same, yeah. same approach with the driver where we're just kind of saying, hey, this is this is based on fitting data, really, from the manufacturers we talk to for a guy who swings 115. This is this is pretty much the ballpark average for what he does. And again, once we get into the 100, it's closer to LPGA. Right. And then again, we try and hit same same type of approach with the average golfer. So we're doing drivers, irons, and wedge testing. We started a little bit of wedge testing today. So yep. high speed high speed is 115, 185 for driver, and then kind of the equivalent for irons. Right? Yep, okay. exactly. Cool, cool, cool. Um, wedge testing. I'm a little excited for that. We're doing a little bit of wet wedge action. Yeah, we're hoping. <laughs> we're That's, the yeah. no, That's the plan. No, so what we will definitely get done is a what we're calling the green side test. So. In the past, what we've done is test, I think the first year we did like 85 yards mm -hmm. and we, at that kind of distance, those speeds, what we saw at an 85 yard wedge wasn't dissimilar to what we were seeing from an eight iron shot. So mm -hmm. the spin curve is pretty consistent. Like if, it, if you spun the seven iron at the time, I think that the first time we tested with a seven iron, if you spun a seven iron, you spun the wedge, mm -hmm. pretty much the same way. Right. Here we are down to a 35 yard shot, I oh, think. Yeah. So it's really a partial wedge, green side kind of shot. Just yeah, exactly. Like, hey, Which you matters. missed you missed the green. Right. You missed the green, you got, you know, you got to carry it a certain way and yep. try and control the spin. So it's, it's really interesting. I'm excited to see what we're going to find out cool. there. Cool, very cool. And we've seen anecdotally kind of just <laughs> glancing at TrackMan's screens We've seen like yeah. 700 RPM difference, which, you know, it's obviously wow. not kind of what we see with a driver, but on a, on a shot with a head speed that's around 40 miles an hour, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty a lot. wild. Yeah. Oh, sure. And well, I was going to ask you, since we test, uh, you know, with different clubs, right? People are wondering, like, you're seeing these balls perform differently for the driver than they do off an iron, like the same exact ball. Um, you know, when people are choosing a golf ball necessarily, how much should they be paying attention to how it performs off the driver versus the iron versus the wedge? Like, really, what club should we be paying attention to most, do you think? You want to take that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a good question. I mean, some of it's kind of player dependent, right? right? Where depending on kind of what they need out of their game. But I'm a big fan of kind of starting at the green, working your way back. Mm -hmm, like if that. you don't know where to start, start uh, around the green because that's probably where you're going to see a lot of the differences. That's where you hit the most shots if you're an average golfer. Like right. you're, gonna, you're gonna hit, what's the number? Like less than, you're gonna miss well more than half the greens in a yeah. round. Yeah, I mean, so you're you gonna have a greens. lot of those little, 
well, 30, 40 yard shots. Well, a lot of people, yeah. when they think first about choosing anything, they go like, oh, I got to go get fit for my driver. Oh, I should get fit for my ball based on where I'm performing off the tee. So, but yeah, you're saying start at the green. I mean, there's different philosophies and, and not necessarily saying one's universally right and one's universally wrong. But, you know, the thing that I like with drivers today, like think about how adjustable drivers are. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. So pretty much everybody has an adjustable driver. And so kind of that concept of where you're probably going to see the most difference in performances around the green first 50 yards, then a hundred yards. They said, we're already seeing say 700 RPM difference in a 35 yard wedge shot, which again, which those say, numbers maybe sound like a your lot. Your quick math like, was like a 15% difference. It was like a 15% difference. And it, that's stuff that real golfers would really notice. If you were hitting two balls side by side, mm -hmm. you would probably hear and certainly feel the difference and then you would see you know that ball reacting on a green differently right. whether it's bouncing once and checking or whether it's just kind of rolling out a little bit more whatever the case is so you start there and then let's say you do get all the way back to your driver and you're like okay well now this is spinning too much for me and it's launching too high right. well maybe you just crank your you know your driver down a degree degree right. and a half depending on what what driver you have what the adjustable sleeve allows you to do but sure. kind of fit the driver then to the ball conditions that are working for you throughout the rest of your back. Well, kind of the same thing, like we talk about wedge fitting too, like you have to consider the conditions that you're normally playing in. I mean, you wrote something about even when you're traveling, maybe your equipment should change or elevation, your ball should change, things like that. that. So I guess, yeah. yeah, go check that out. It's actually very useful. Um, so <clears throat> fly, um, based on what we know, here. it's not, not safe, safe here. It isn't. We got scorpions, we got <laughs> flies, we have bobcats. Bobcats in the backyard. Rattlesnake videos. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, people are asking a lot about when they go to choose a golf ball, especially with what we know, um, what should they really be curtailing their ball to? Like, is it their swing speed? People ask like, okay, I'm a 10 handicap. Hey, I'm a scratch golfer. Like, what should I be playing? The game is so unique to everybody, but like what, I mean, if it's, you could say it simply. Where, it's not where much different start? than the driver. With a driver, right, you you mm -hmm. have a speed, you're getting speed, whatever, that's driven mostly by your club speed. So there is a little bit of that contribution, but that's just one piece of the equation. So right. you have to fit the speed properties of the ball, the flight, I don't like to say launch because when, when everything shakes out, you're gonna see- They launch pretty, about the same. Yeah. The same. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's really how far do they climb? And this is one of the reasons why we, we test outdoors with TrackMan instead of indoors with Foresight for golf ball specifically, mm -hmm. is you need to kind of look at that full flight the trajectory. So you know, with the golf ball, it's is am I achieving the, the right trajectory for the speed that I'm creating, and right. am I getting a spin rate that's going to optimize whether that's distance or green stopping power on an sure. iron and finding the right balance. So the two big things to be looking at are flight and trajectory, and then after that it becomes, eh, all right, maybe you wanna think about feel a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you're gonna be, on flight and spin, you're gonna be locked into a narrow a certain, set of balls, really. So. Yeah, I mean, once you get flight and spin dialed then it's okay, Here, here's my optimal trajectory. and and. You know, I think one of the concerns people will maybe perseverate on optimal too much because optimal <laughs> might not be achievable for it's you. Suboptimal. <laughs> you know, close as close as you can get to an optimal range, you figure out you're okay, great. Once you hit that, yeah, that might narrow you down to a handful, three, four, five different golf balls, which you can then sure. and say, okay, these are all going to work for me. Mm -hmm. And now maybe I do want to hit chips and putts with them and go, oh, okay, this one's a feels a little harder. This one feels a little softer. I don't yeah. like that. I do like that. But now you're not choosing a softball or a ball that feels a certain way just because it feels that way. You're right. you're picking out of an already selected group that is going to work for you probably that pretty well. Sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> kind of shifting a little bit. I'm, I'm thinking, shh, a little bit. Um, any holy <laughs> moments yet? I mean, I know it's early. It's only day three. So but, but, okay. I saw over, this. saw the snake. I, well, okay. <laughs> that was on the, that, other than that. Then I then was we saw, over. We saw a bobcat. That's cool right club. Right. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, we're actually at two locations this time. Um, originally, we were testing over at Scottsdale National. So we're there, but we're also over at the Cool Clubs um, at Sunridge. And I was over there for the majority of the day today. And there was a ball that went 30 yards offline. Is that now, a big deal? Is it a big deal? You tell me. It's It was only one out of the hundreds of balls that we hit today. I don't know if I'm, I'm not gonna tell you which one it was quite yet. Um, 
But, you know, did you have any holy shit moments over at Scottsdale? Like, you will how have, much is 30 yards? Like, should we even be worried about that? You will have, you will observe fewer holy shit moments off irons. Um, okay. Yeah. Because it's, it, it's almost, you're kind of like, oh, that looks a little offline. And then you get down in the dispersion pattern. Like, well, it's, it's in a sensible window. Right. Speed, as we've talked about before, is, is an accelerant. It's like gasoline on the fire. So if there's any kind of problem with a golf ball and you throw some additional speed at it, that's where you're going to see it. So yeah, okay. 30 yards offline is a big deal. That was at 100 miles per hour too. Yeah. And so yeah, when, we, when we crank up the high speed, we may see some stuff. Um, yeah. But one of the interesting things we're, we're going to do coming out of this is we're, we're looking when we, when we have those holy shit moments, especially with the driver, we're making note of those balls. And you know, we've got a plan to to re-hit them in a few different orientations as well as potentially uh, we we have an opportunity let's just call it that way to <laughs> to check the center of gravity on these golf balls and see if like we can conclusively say yeah this is uh -huh. this is out of balance and you know if you and the interesting thing we we talked about this with philip what to look at when you see that because sometimes you do get a gust of wind Sure. And oh, yeah. It, under the right conditions, you can see wind obviously create some significant dispersion. Right. But if you look at foresight, especially when we're running TrackMan and foresight in parallel, mm -hmm. uh, if you see a big spin axis shift on on foresight, you definitely know that something something's, something's up. Something's up. Yeah. yeah. Something's up. Yep. Uh, and likewise, if you see an observable, uh, the other thing too, we have weather stations, so we're, we're real time kind of knowing what the wind is doing for every shot. Mm -hmm. And so if you see a ball move hard one way and the wind is blowing the other way and you don't have a spin axis tilt, then you're like, okay, aerodynamic problem. Right. Yep, we got something. So, yeah, we had a couple of those with the irons. They said the, it's kind of one of those things where I always think of it kind of like when you go shopping for a new TV mm -hmm. and you like go to Best Buy or whatever, and it's on the wall and you, there's, you know, 300 TVs. And when you look at all of them, you can see kind of the differences, right? We're oh, like, sure. oh, this one has, you know, deeper blacks and this one has a much better contrast ratio or whatever right. it is. Um, so as an individual shot, you go, okay, yeah, that's fine. But when you're sitting there and you watch 308 irons in a row, oh my God. and then you see one that's like eight more yards right mm -hmm. or 10 more yards left, you kind of yeah. go, oh, what was that? And like yep. I said, then you look at the weather thing, you look at it and say, okay, what may have caused that? Okay, which ball was it? We can go on the track, man, and see, okay, that was this brand, mm -hmm. that model. Um, ball number seven. Ball number, ball number seven. seven. You know, and we'll dig maybe more into that later, but it's kind of like, okay, make a note about that one. Maybe it did some funky stuff. Let's see mm -hmm. if we see that yeah. also represented in the driver test or something else. Oh, but sure. At this point, it's more just curiosity notes, yeah. you know? And, and you never know. Like, just weird things happen with a robot where it just is a little off and it catches the T funky. Any number of things mm -hmm. can happen. And, and so to be able to go, yeah, we know exactly how this ball was positioned at impact. Yep. Can we repeat it? Mm -hmm. What happens if we flip it the other way? Does it? Do we see the opposite impact? So there's a lots of things we can, we can try. And, and we, like I said, I think we're going to have some opportunities to do some of that as well as actually put these things on, on some different gauges and see if we can actually quantify the CG location of anything that looks weird. So yeah. could get some cool stuff out of this, for oh, sure. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, so there's kind of been this question, like we were kind of talking about this a little bit last week, like is there a noticeable difference? We've been kind of noticing a few things, like mid-irons yesterday, there was a 15 yard difference between the longest and the shortest ball, mm -hmm. at least in the dispersion pattern we were looking at on TrackMan. And people assume that you only see that at high swing speeds for drivers. Like that's just not, that's just not true. Like literally what, 2021, there was 30, almost 32 yards in between longest and shortest. So, you know, what- I'll take your word for it. Yeah, well, that sounds close. <laughs> numbers don't lie, <laughs> am I right? Um, but you know, it's not just the high swing speed drivers that we're seeing these distance differences on. Like mm -hmm. what, what, what should we, what do, what do you take I, from that? I mean, I think the biggest thing to take from it is that there's always going to be differences that golf balls don't perform the same, whether it's high swing speed, low swing speed, or, yeah. or, you know, medium swing speeds that there's always going to be differences. And based on the launch conditions, again, you know, not all golf balls are the same. Yeah. And you, and I, I mean, I think the other thing is you got to also kind of understand that eight yards can be a really big deal, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's people will kind of look at the numbers and gloss over the numbers or go, Oh, okay, well this was five yards or that was seven yards or this was two yards or, Okay, really, how big of a deal is eight yards? And you go, okay, well, think about a par three that you tend to play a lot, and yeah. 
you show me where eight yards is a big difference. Mm -hmm. it, it won't be hard for you to figure out where eight yards the wrong, you know, wrong direction is a big difference. And that eight yards on a mid iron is well within yeah. our statistical, you know, averages. So to see 10, 12 or 15, yeah. that's like, oh, huge, what dude. is going on? Yeah. And it's to think about it as relate it more directly to the game on an individual level. When you look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you got a pink flamingo. Yeah, well, one of our guys just That's walked Rob. by with a pink, pink flamingo, flamingo floaty. swing floaty. So anyway, as I was saying, if you if you kind of just walk out there and, and look at the dispersion pattern and, and march it off, like, like you said, it's you know eight yards, whatever it happens to be. Right. And sometimes a little bit more even. You're like, it doesn't look like a huge gap. And to, maybe at the extremes, but kind of just in the in the middle of the pile, it doesn't like look like a huge gap. But when you think about it, well, you know, what if what if I was aiming for the a pin at the back of this dispersion pattern, mm. and then you know, oh, maybe that yardage is significant. And so just kind of having the ball again optimized or as close as you can get for your swing, knowing that that distance is going to be what you need it to be, and hit it consistently because you're not playing a trash golf ball. Right. Oh sure. It's, right. You know, it certainly matters. Well, and then also too, like it's always the oh, distance is king, and that comes with drivers, that comes with just club fitting in general. And then you get to the balls, and you're like, oh god, we were talking about this earlier. It's like, oh my god, what's the longest ball? I need the longest ball. I need that. I need it. And it's like, well, if you're if you're hitting your shots, what's he doing with that? I, I, I don't, don't know. I, <laughs> <laughs> Jump in. Jump, he's going in. He's getting in. He's going oh, he's in. He's going to float around it. We also, yeah. as I said, it's not safe here. And so we had wind come through the other night and a glass tabletop blew into the pool and broke. You're going so, in? He's right. going in. Rob's going in. Um, I totally forgot what I was saying. He's well, we're going to be filming this with Rob floating yeah, around. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, gonna be uh, anyway. beautiful. What was I saying? Oh, if, so, okay, distance is king. Yes, everyone thinks that when they get club fit. When Now when they get ball fit, I mean, like, longest ball is by far the, peop the one of the biggest questions everyone sure. asks us, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're overshooting the green... <laughs> okay. I, I want a golf ball. I want a golf ball where I start flying greens. If you are That's overshooting the green, at what point are you choosing distance over dispersion? Well, I mean, at that point, you need to just choose a different club to hit. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. <laughs> like, or a different game to play. <laughs> just an know, absolute maybe. different game to play. Uh, yeah, that could work. Um, there's a lot of new golf balls that have come out, mm -hmm. right? So we've got the new Pro V1, new Pro V1X. Um, LA Golf has released something that we're a little intrigued with. La golf. La golf. <laughs> um, I know two one zero, baby. Yeah, I know. Seriously, Beverly Hills on the side. I think that's B H. I will say marketing on that. Phew. All right. Um, any, any? Was there a question in there? Yeah, I should <laughs> cut that immediately. Cut that. No, no, um, that's good. Any dis any disappointments that we've seen in the new lineup of golf balls compared to what we found in 2021, do you think? No, I mean... Nothing yet, nothing disappointing. I mean, like I said, there's just maybe some more curiosities. And, um, and even even when you talk about like a ball flying 30 yards offline, like that should not happen. Right. But if it's it's one ball, right. like again, that's the kind of thing, we don't sweat that in Ball Lab because we know that one bad ball can happen to absolutely any manufacturer. Is, oh, so, sure. Is it one bad ball? Or is there a pattern of wonkiness? So that's, uh, and so at this point, I, I can't say we've established any pattern. I think definitely we've been we've been looking at the LA golf ball very closely just because of the claims. And I think well, because of the claims and the price point. Yeah, I mean they, you know, yeah. you want to get attention. And I don't, you know, when I see, for example, the ad where it's it's longer than three Titleist golf balls. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Right. Right. But the the thing, the red flag for me was all right. LA golf ball is the longest. And of of that competitive set, the Pro V One X Left Dash is the shortest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> sort of like, all right. And uh, so that's where you go. All right. What kind of what in kind what of launch conditions? What kind of robot yeah. voodoo did you throw at this to create <laughs> this result? Because it's right. it's super strange. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, you need to get I wish I wish our camera guy could turn this around right now and see. Yeah, uh, he'll take care of it. But um, so like the order of that just didn't make sense. And so we're like, all right, is there yeah. some robot voodoo? Because mm -hmm. there's a reason why we kind of chose these mid range parameters, because if you adjust robots and start getting to extremes, you can get some you can change the results, especially in distance. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. And that's, you know, it's, it's easy to cook the a problem robot is, test. Then. Yeah. And the problem <laughs> is with the robots. And I mean, this is just another point you like. We mentioned at the beginning, using typical launch conditions 
based on players that we see, like real in you know, real really, life. Yeah, I mean, so whether it's PGA Tour or LPGA or yeah, just what average we're golfers about, like, or whatever, where's like, the biggest part of the bell curve? Yeah, I'm I mean, sure. people don't launch their driver at seven degrees oh, with. No. 4,200 spin. Oh, no, no. Now, you could maybe Somebody get does. Somebody says, does. There is a golfer that does that. Right, and you can set up a, ro- a robot to configure some pretty bizarre launch conditions to maybe get some rather contrived results. We've seen it happen before, but... Sure. Yeah, and well, so that's what to we, bring, why we do what we do. But right? to bring full circle, like I don't, I don't think when we run the numbers and we crunch out, we are not going to see that result. Mm-hmm. Right. But, you know, and that, that's a marketing result. Right. But... What we've seen is that is a competent golf ball. Like there have been no sure. red flags to date. Uh-uh. Distance wise, is it is it longer than left dash? I don't think so, but it's mm-hmm. it's not going to be far off. Okay. And again, so it's so comparable, kind of, but the, not... the order of that finish was kind of weird, as yeah. I said. But red flag. it's it's looked good off irons in the in where we are with our wedge testing today. It was green, very consistent. It, yeah, not so only far. was it consistent, but the green side spin was was reasonably high. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was it was up there from what we had seen so far, and again, anecdotal to an extent, but it looked to be on the higher spinning side from a ball that is not necessarily high spin in other places. So, okay. right, where yeah. I'm really intrigued with that golf ball is, you know, like I said, we haven't seen red flags. Let's assume that the rest of the test unfolds in kind of a similar way, and the data shows that, okay, it's a good, Golf ball. Right. Well, then you start looking at the whole price comparison piece of oh, like, okay, seventy dollars. Is it if it's good? Yeah. You know, in order, you know, for people that are looking to take again, we'll use titles because that's the bar that everybody measures themselves against. Oh sure. And call it fifty five dollars a dozen or right. something. I'm not seeing anything so far in the data that would suggest that it's a fifteen dollar a more dozen more. premium over a Titleist mm-hmm. golf ball other than saying that you maybe play a golf ball that somebody else doesn't have or whatever the case is. Right. I'm not saying it's bad or like I said, but what happens if we get it and we look at the performance characteristics and say, hey, this is very similar to other really good golf balls in the 35 to $40 space. Right. And sure. it has very similar characteristics and maybe even a similar manufacturer mm-hmm. to or place of manufacture. Mm-hmm. Then... Then where does that kind of leave the conversation? That's what and I'm going to be looking for. And it'll be for. really interesting in this case to when we can run it through Ball Lab and see like, okay, we, we didn't see anything in the ball test, but, may, and again, maybe we will because we're not all the way through it yet. We haven't right. crunched the data, but yeah. how does it stack up in terms of like the other things we look at? Is it as consistent as the most consistent balls on the in our test or, or right. in our in our database, or is it kind of in that average range? And so that that becomes a factor too. But mm-hmm. in terms of just strictly what we have observed to this point in the test, yeah. mm-hmm. no red flags. And mm-hmm. so like I can't, nope. I, I, I we certainly can't call BS on the margin claims except to say like like I said, the order finish was weird, mm-hmm. and I don't think it's going to show as longer than those balls at least under most of the conditions like two or probably two of the three conditions we're testing so yeah all the claims but we'll was, see. was ballsy that's yeah. why we're we that's we why we run the test we'll we see what it. the numbers say that's why we do it all right mm-hmm. i think i'm gonna jump into speed golf are you guys ready i know you you still got your running shoes on from today i got my birkenstocks on so hook a one one <laughs> i'm ready i'm the brooks are ready the brooks are ready brooks are ready all right so actually oh. we've got a couple reader questions Ooh. that i want to look at okay Fired up. What are they asking? Oh, God. Ugh, I hate that noise. <laughs> I hate that noise. How does it not get, like, how do you not... How do you oh, not shoot, I'm empty. Hold oh, on, I'll be back. No. Actually, yes, we do need to refill. I don't know if you want to cut that. Yeah, so, a biggest surprise in ball test so far. Can you say one yet? I don't know. So, I... Yeah, not even, because I was going to say, like, we, we've seen some pretty big distance numbers from the Max Flight Tour X, mm. but we also measured the compression on those as high as 106, so I would expect well, I was gonna, that. Could, I was going to ask you, because uh, we were talking about this today, so people were saying, because earlier today, I don't know if you caught it on Instagram, but Philip was saying that as far as consistency goes, he was like, oh, Max Fly is going to beat out a particular, a particular tailor-made golf ball. Now... The reason he said that was obviously based on what we were seeing from mid-swing speed driver. But when I posted that, everyone was like, oh my God, but, but you rated the MaxFly, the new MaxFly in Ball Lab, not so hot in comparison to what it did in 2021. So I guess what's the correlation between what we see in Ball Lab and then what we're seeing here? Yeah, so Ball Lab, right, is, is quality based on a sample and 
this the ball test is strictly performance. And in the case of the MaxFly Tour X, mm -hmm. what we saw in Ball Lab, and, and this is true, we've talked about this, this is true for just about everything that we see out of Foremost. Mm -hmm. And we haven't necessarily seen it with every model tested, but just generally speaking about how that factory Over turns. Over time, we've seen right, it. Yeah, like mm -hmm. you, there is a clear pattern where very often, like th the quality is generally very good. And so it wouldn't surprise me if those Max Flies were the ones we bought for this test were right. really consistent, but we also see going back to Every Ball Lab. Every once in a while. Yeah, just one Every box. One, one of one the box. boxes, one of the three that we bought and measured was different. Yeah. And uh, it's typically a compression thing. Yeah. Like out of foremost, right? Where we get, you know, you want, you want the metrics to be as tightly grouped as possible, right? right? And there's always going to be some range and some variance, but what we see with foremost sometimes is maybe it's one box or part of one box where the difference between the highest compression one in the box and the lowest compression ball in that box, mm -hmm. that range is or even larger the than entire sample. And yeah, so it's yeah. just larger than than we would want. So it gets dinged on the consistency component, which is why this year's one was you know didn't score quite as well as the one before. Everything else held up really really well. So right. I would not be at all surprised to see Tour X perform really really well in parts of the test. Yeah, and, and interesting for certain golfers like that wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah. And the glitchy box in that particular case was really high compression. So I think the target on our gauges, I would expect the target compression would measure out really close to, let's say high 90s, 97, yeah. 98. Yeah. We had that box, we had 106s in it's like there. It's like they just so overcooked the pizza. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, like, it's, it just got it's over. Rock. It's yeah. And so, and it, and it gelled with some of the stuff we were hearing from readers where they're like, I don't like the way this ball feels. Mm -hmm. it's like, well, it feels you, a little firmer than what the one before, which, would make sense. Yeah. Higher so compression if you, ball. All if things, you drew yeah. the 106, yeah. you're probably not going to like the way that feels. Whereas if you're used to a 97 and you draw 106, you're going to go, ooh, yeah, this is a little funky. It's yeah. it's Pro V1 X to something, you know, almost uh, quite a bit to, firmer. Anyway, yeah, so. So something that's <laughs> way firmer than that. Oh, my God. So this actually this year, jumping to the next question. This ooh, year, I'm ready. We are testing a colored golf ball for the first time. No, not the first time. What was our first one? So we did it in the it first ball yellow. test. We did uh, it was also yellow. Strixon, we did a Strix on Z Star. Uh, uh -huh. I wasn't here for that. So yeah, so, yeah we are doing. You. We're just looking to see because we we get asked all the time. What was the question? Is a is a yellow <laughs> Pro V One? Does a yellow one Pro V One oh, perform any differently right. from? Well, I didn't actually ask that, but I'm glad that you. I know where that. she was going. Mm. You did. That's good. I didn't. Mm. Right here. Right here. Right here. So yeah. Um, so basically, does a yellow golf ball or? In the, you know, I mean, does it perform differently than a white one? Mm. And short answer, maybe it's possible. So we but think, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting, and we'll look and see uh, if there's any statistically significant difference. Titleist tells us they work really hard because it's not as simple as paint. There's actual <laughs> chemistry. We in were making, talking. We were yeah, talking like, about this today. We're it's, like, you didn't just take like a white golf ball and like dip it in yellow paint. And they're like, oh, yeah, there just, you like, go. Yeah, like, like, yeah. Oh, instead of a white bucket, you throw it in the yellow bucket. There's actual <laughs> chemistry to make it look good. Mm. Uh, so. You know, we'll be looking primarily like it's always like spin rate. Some people say, "Oh, I think it spins a little more or less." Yeah. And that was the same rumor with the Shrixons back in the mm -hmm. day. And we, you know, we didn't see much, just enough to go, "Well, maybe," but not mm -hmm. a lot. Right. But it was interesting. So the way we're running the test, the Pro V1 is the calibration ball. We have to retrieve those a little bit more often. Yeah. And so you know, we go out when they're landing. We go out and kind of catch them as they arrive. Mm -hmm. And I was out this morning and the yellow pro v ones were already out there and they were they were grouped pretty tightly mm -hmm. and then the first two first two white ones that came in landed like they were right in the same pile so right. like just again anecdotally and i'm sure you know there's always some variation but i'm not what we haven't seen much so far so mm -hmm. not as big as a difference as glossy balls versus matte balls oh geez Ooh. Ooh. yeah if you're playing a matte ball just stop just stop just don't. Just stop. Friends yeah. don't let friends, friends play yeah. Matt golf balls. That's another t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Could be. Suboptimal Matt. Suboptimal is really. <laughs> Matt suboptimal. Matt, 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 Matt golf balls. Suboptimal. Okay. Is soft still slow? That's yep. just, I had yep. to ask. Yep. Okay, great. Just stop. We should all cover that. Actually, you still have that sticker on your laptop. I saw that. I do. Yeah, soft so. is still slow. Yep. There you have it. All right, I'm jumping into speed golf. For Finally, real, for yeah. real. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought that was. <clears throat> no, that was, oh. that was like marathon. All right, golf. we're gonna do a little bit different than how you normally do. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you two speed golf questions and I'm going into rapid fire, okay? Love so rapid. like yes or no, this okay. or that, okay? I'm ready. Okay, speed golf. Ready. Most unexpected golf ball. 
I got nothing. Most unexpected? Yeah, there yeah. hasn't been any. Uh, nacho ball, because Ooh. I've never heard of it. Nacho. It's really called not your ball. Oh, no, it's called nacho ball. Well, actually, let's talk no, about we are, we're in the Southwest. It's a nacho <laughs> ball now. This is nacho <laughs> ball. I, I never heard of it. This is one of the new ones in the test, so I was kind of intrigued just because it... I thought NYT stood for New... Or NY, NYB. NYB. I thought it was New York Bagels. Ooh, there is a New York Bagels. So <laughs> Very disappointing when you open the box. Really disappointed. Really disappointed. Really disappointed. Yeah. Actually, oh, yeah. well, speaking of which, they were... We were doing over at uh, Cool Clubs. Speaking of. I'm sorry. <laughs> But they said that it was actually doing pretty well. Anyway, besides the point. No. Okay. Um, next question. Um, which ball are you most excited to see the results for? I like golf. Mm, La golf. Um, since you took my answer, yeah, that I'm. La golf. The new snow balls. Oh yes, took, we've got a lot of questions answer. about that. A lot of questions. It's been a big consumer favorite for okay. a long, long time. So you know, what, can I go back to the biggest surprise? Yeah. I want the seed ball off. Off the Whoa. irons today, the SD, I want to say it was the SD01. It was the 01. Was definitely to... in that pattern. It was it was the longest of that group. And to date, like, that's one where it has a following. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. my God. People DM me about the seed balls all the time. But it was, to me, up until that point, it just, it was one of probably... 35 balls in the test where you're just like, oh yeah, I guess it's in there. Like you, nothing about it. It's yes. entirely unremarkable and not in a bad way. Just, yeah, it's like, just yeah. Cause especially what you're going to notice in this test is if something is just stands out, whether it's because it was really long, I guess it's worth mentioning too, based on the 100 mile an hour and 85 mile an hour driver test, mm -hmm. the Vero X2, the Encore ball seemed to be a little short. Yes. I did um, notice that. So, and again, it's driver is just one piece of the equation, probably not. Yeah, the and most we'll see but, when we pull yeah. all the data together. But so little things like that, where I kind of that was one I expected maybe to be a little bit longer, and then the seed again, the seed ball just not even really only being on the radar because it was voted in by the readers in the survey. Right. To see it kind of at least yeah, like in, in one that. scenario, kind of just being do separate. something. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. back to speed golf. Speed golf. Okay, quick. What Great. is what lab are you most looking forward to? Because we're doing high swing oh, speed, like one to thirty. You can answer first, but we okay. agree. Yeah. So we're just and it's 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 for fun. It's not going to be statistically significant. It's going to be amazing data. though. But at the end of the week, we are going to crank the robot up to a hundred and thirty <laughs> mile an hour we're swing. Cranking speed. it up to eleven. Maybe. Up. We're going to hit up two, to eleven. We're going to hit two or three balls with each ball in the test at the kind of end of the day and, and see just which ones are, are the absolute longest under kind of tour extreme conditions. Just so yeah. everyone knows, the, the engineer literally told us that we are not technically allowed to be in the room when the robot is operating at that speed. So. Because, yeah, if, uh, if it does break a shaft, there's a risk of impalement, <laughs> bodily mm -hmm. harm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we're both looking forward to that. All right, we're going into rapid fire. It's yes or no. That wasn't rapid fire. <laughs> no, I'm talking this is yes or no. No right. explanation, okay? Don't okay. get a okay. cheat. Okay, Kirkland Ball, yes or no? Spinny. No. What? Arizona in July? No. Okay. Absolutely yes. Oh, wow, okay. Refurbished golf balls? No. no. Perfect. Uh, playing a golf ball that you find in the woods? Mm, probably not. Nah. Occasionally. I need a yes or no. No. Nah. Okay. Paying $70 a dozen for a golf ball? Never. Nah, it's tough. No. Yes or no? No. no. <laughs> Just <laughs> yellow golf balls. Yes. yes. Wow. No. I should have been on this. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Pick one. Okay. Tailor made Titleist. Golf Title. ball specific. Titleist. Nice. Callaway or PXG? Callaway. Callaway. It's a spin. I yeah, guess. It's, it's too spinny. PXG's one too. For me, it's probably too. Spin. I need a lower spin, so. Oh, okay. It's nothing against the PXG. Player ball. specific. Okay. Well, yeah. You got, right. Yeah. Strixon or Wilson? Ooh. Strixon again, but again, it's that staff model is a really good ball, but it spins too much for me. Okay, Strixon. Yeah. Strixon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I need a lower Yeah. And in our lower budget, Maxfly or Kirkland? <laughs> Max Maxfly. That one's too easy. Oh, yeah. God. Even the new too generation? Easy. Yes. Yeah. Which, Max by the way, we yeah. are testing the latest. The, the it's, yeah. Guess what? It's still spinny. Weird. Uh -huh. Weird. Super spinny. <laughs> Super still. spinny. Yeah. All right. Sprint is over. I, I like the rapid fire. We should do it more often. We should do that more often. Like that. Oh, you sleep. You're sleeping. It's <laughs> past Tony's bed. bedtime. It is past Tony's <laughs> bedtime. <laughs> past Tony's. 
We're gonna wrap it up for today, but thanks for joining us for our very special edition for 2023. Once we get our results, we will be sure to update you back at HQ as well as back in Colorado and Saratoga. Wonderful. Um, thanks for joining us again, and we will see you on the flip. Hi, Rob. Yeah, check out Rob. To say we out. Oh, we out. On the flip. <laughs> That's also fair. <sighs> should I look at the camera? Um. Oh, if I didn't mention before, when, how how long should we wait until results? No, I just absolutely stop that. Okay. Somebody go film that. Somebody yeah. get Rob, please. Good. The, <laughs> the real question is going to be how long will he stay? Oh, Chris Law, like he's such a problem solver. He's like, yeah, this glass in the pool. All right, everybody, that's it for today. But uh, make sure to check back our for like thick that 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 yeah.